Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Today we're heading to the land of the living skies, the province of Saskatchewan. Scott Moe has led the Saskatchewan party to a fifth consecutive majority government, a feat that has not been accomplished since 1960, when then-governing NDP under Tommy Douglas won five straight back-to-back majority governments. The results of Monday night's election, 35 seats for the Saskatchewan party and 26 seats for the official opposition, the New Democratic Party of Saskatchewan, led by leader Carla Beck. Now, as rural municipalities across the province are preparing for this new incoming government, some may be asking themselves, what does the result mean for rural municipalities? And how will the cabinet be composed? To help answer those questions and so much more, we caught up with SARM Acting President Bill Huber. He shares his thoughts on the Mo's victory and what this new government means for rural municipalities across the province of Saskatchewan. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Um, Sarm, you've been watching this provincial election unfold. The results came in last night. The Saskatchewan party led by Premier Scott Moe won a fifth consecutive majority government. What was your initial reactions as the results were coming in? Well, we kind of anticipated, uh, you know, that they may lose some seats. That's kind of been the, the polling statistics in the last couple of weeks. And uh, so it really wasn't a surprise to see them... Uh, to form the majority government. They, they have lost, I think, 12 seats, but, uh, you know, sometimes good opposition makes good government. And, uh, and I look forward to the opportunity and the pleasure of working with uh, not only the government and Premier Mo and his cabinet when he selected them, but also with, uh, with the opposition to have some dialogue with them to, uh, you know, to see that some of the things that they're concerned about are addressed through our members and, and rural municipalities. Now, during the election, you had your four pillars that you were hoping that the next government, which is now Scott Moe, would be addressing. Still early days. We're recording this literally about 12 hours after the final results were coming in. What's priority one for SARM that they hope that this government addresses when they recall the legislature or even in the speech from the throne? Well, I think the number one thing is health care, and especially not only in the rural Saskatchewan, but the cities too. As our members are basically, you know, rural rural uh, residents of this province, and there's a there is a shortage of nurses and nurse practitioners and doctors and clinics in rural Saskatchewan, and it's tough to fill those vacancies. And, and I know I've uh, we've had an excellent working relationship with the previous ministers of health, and uh, and I hope that continues on. And I have no reason to to think it won't. So we'll be reaching out to uh, to the new minister of health and uh, quite optimistic that we'll get meetings and, uh, and sit down and have some uh, <clears throat> real concrete discussions on how we can make things better and improve things in rural Saskatchewan and, and, and our cities and, uh, and the villages too that, uh, that really benefit our residents here in this province. One of the big things that SARM was calling for even prior to this election was to get the government to allow nurse practitioners to start addressing some of the shortages in sort of the rural communities within Saskatchewan. You talk about the head minister of health. We are not sure if he's going to continue to be the minister of health, but if he does, do you think Everett would be able to address this issue from a SARM perspective? Oh, certainly. I have uh, all the confidence in the world in Everett. I think he did a tremendous job even when Min Minister Merriman was the, was the health minister and he was a remote, rural and remote minister and then moved up into the, uh, 
the Minister of Health. And I think very capable individual, very easy to uh, communicate with, and uh, and totally understands the needs of, of rural Saskatchewan because of his, uh, you know, his riding is in uh, you know Western Saskatchewan in a small city. So certainly, uh, I, I look forward to working with him if he is. Uh, you know, fortunate enough to get that portfolio game. Now, as president of SARM, I'm, I'm one of these nerds who likes to learn a little bit about backgrounds of individual provincial candidates. Rural municipalities will be represented in this new government. You have two former uh, councillors slash uh, Reeves who are already in government, but the Reeve of Prince Albert just won in Saskatchewan Rivers, uh, defeating the uh, Saskatchewan United Party uh, former leader in that riding. Do you hope that the new crop of MLAs, the current crop of uh, cabinet ministers MLAs, will be able to address the rural municipal issues that are being faced with your communities and your members right now? Oh, certainly I do. I have all the confidence in the world with, uh, with the, <clears throat> the new uh, face in the, in the uh, Prince Albert riding beating Nadine Wilson and also, you know, an uh, 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 incumbent in, uh, in the, our, our, the constituency of Cannington, Daryl Harrison, you know, certainly no strangers to rural Saskatchewan and, uh, and the needs that, that, that we need to address to, uh, to serve them rural communities. So I look forward to that opportunity to work with, with some of these new individuals. One of the big things that, oh, when I've spoken to mayors, Reeves, councillors from across Saskatchewan, I hear over and over again, infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. You, you, you smile a little bit. And I'm assuming you know where the question's going, but what can the province do on day one to address the infrastructure shortfalls that rural municipal municipalities are facing with today? I guess give us the opportunity to meet with them. First off, and uh, we don't know who's going to be the new Minister of Highways. Uh, minister Carr was the minister. We had an excellent relationship working with her. I think she's been in this office three times within the last uh, several months. And, uh, you know, she indicated the last meeting that she was here, if she is re-elected and, uh, and is fortunate enough to have that portfolio of Minister of Highways, we will have more meetings because infrastructure is a huge part of the uh, the rural municipal makeup. and. Uh, you know, we've grown our, our agriculture industry, we've grown the oil and gas industry, certainly the potash industry and mining, you know, there's a new copper mine coming on stream. So we, we need roads and bridges and, and highways to, uh, to get our product to market. And uh, the funding for the, the RIRG program has been deteriorating and depleting over the last number of years. A number of years ago, we had $45 million in that fund and uh, then it went to 25, and now we're down to we're down to 15, and it popped up a little bit to 17. But that uh, is not keeping pace with uh, inflation costs. Construction costs are high. We've got well over 1,260 bridges in this uh, province. 60% of them are at uh, nearing the end of their uh, lifespan. They're going to need replacing, and uh, 16 or 18 million dollars just doesn't cut it anymore. We've got the CTP program that's. Uh, that uh, we have to fund municipalities with, pay them on those roads. So it's a, it's a huge challenge, and uh, we can't burden that tax just solely on our ratepayers and our municipalities. So we need help from the government, and we need to get that uh, funding increased substantially. And we don't expect to see all that in one year. We don't expect to go from 17 million to 40 million, but we need to have three to five million dollars at least every year for for a few years to the life of the, this new contract. So very, very important to, to our rural members and, uh, and the export demands that, uh, for food, food security in the world, because we are major exporters. We've, uh, you know, well over $13 billion now in, in exports. I want to talk about the urban-rural divide that we saw last night, and I'm going to put you on the spot here. We're going to ask the political question, if you don't mind. The Saskatchewan Party did extremely well in rural Saskatchewan. The NDP did extremely well in the two larger urban centres, whether that be Saskatoon and Regina. As president of rural municipalities, this gives you a sort of a leg up heading into the next session, being that the majority of the new incoming government caucus is from rural Saskatchewan. Are you concerned that this could divide Scott Moe's time and trying to address some of the urban issues rather than the rural issues? 
No, I'm not concerned about that one little bit. Uh, <clears throat> Scott represents a rural riding in the, RM, or in the constituency of Shellbrook. He was a previous farmer. His uh, parents farmed, his brother farms. Uh, he's very well connected to agriculture. He sees the needs of, of agriculture and business and industry in this province, and uh, I don't think that'll harm us one bit. I think we'll, we'll be, we feel pretty confident that we'll be able to work with the Premier on that. And my final question, what's your message to the new incoming crop of MLAs? Because the government did have a large turnover of incumbents not seeking re-election, and there's a lot of new members who are going to be stepping into that legislature as a first-time MLA. What's your message from rural municipalities to the new incoming government, whether they be cabinet or backbenchers? Well, I, I feel pretty confident the Premier's going to pick a, a cabinet that's going to be... Uh, workable with us. Uh, I, we, we don't have any concerns there. There's going to be some, some previous MLAs that are still there that, uh, that, are, that we're familiar with and I'm sure they're going to get a lot of cabinet uh, positions and, uh, and some of the new ones. I think the Premier will pick his cabinet on their strengths and abilities and, uh, and their ability to contribute to, to what portfolio they're uh, placed in. So no worries at all there. I think it, it'll all work out good and it'll take some time to for everybody to get comfortable and, and fit into their new roles. But uh, we're certainly there to support them, and, uh, and I'm sure they're going to support us on some of our concerns that, address, that we need to be, have addressed in rural Saskatchewan. So I need you to take your SARM hat off for a second and put on your councillor hat for a second, if you don't mind. Um, I was just up in the arm of Lipton just two days ago, actually, touring around because I like to go visit communities that my guests have uh, appeared on the show. And locally... You have your re-elected re MLA. So from a local perspective, what's it going to be like to work with Travis again? Well, it's going to be, uh, it'll be fun. I've known Travis all, all my life. I was personal friends with his mom and dad. Um, he's, a, he's an excellent uh, uh, rookie, cab or rookie uh, MLA. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, you know, Travis is a hardworking individual. He's uh, very intelligent. He's connected to agriculture. He farmed himself. He's a, been a pipeline welder, welded and you know, familiar with the oil and gas industry. Just a super individual. Has great strengths in, in leadership and, and youth and, and promoting people and working together with people. So I think it, I'm so glad he's reelected. I didn't have any concerns that he would lose, you know, and he felt quite confident too because, uh, because, of, because of his ability to. Uh, to uh, interact and, and take direction from his peers. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. We want to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in for the last few weeks as we have been diving deep into the Saskatchewan election from a municipal standpoint, from our daily episodes of Municipal Leader Conversations to our live episode on election night with SUMA Executive Director John Mark Nadeau and also the Scoop of Political uh, Editor and Earns Cliff Strategies principal dale richardson we could not have done this without them we could not have done this without you the listeners to the viewers as well we truly do appreciate all the energy and time that you've taken to listen to us and learn a little bit more of what the next provincial government and what the next uh, government will need to do from a municipal standpoint we also want to take this moment and say thank you so much to those who have subscribed over the last month. We have seen an increase of subscribers that we did not expect to see. And we appreciate every single one of you, from the subscribers who have backed us financially to our subscribers on YouTube or even Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Your support means the world to us, so thank you so much. So stay connected, stay informed, and we'll be back here next time on Municipal Affairs. Till then.